Uh, the final speaker for state agency and, and public officials is Senator Edith Craig. Good morning, Senator McDonald. And I don't see Representative Lawler, but you can say good morning to him for me. Anyhow, and members of this very distinguished committee, for the record, I'm uh, Edith Prague. I'm the senator from the 19th District. And I'm here today to go on record uh, in support of Ray's Bill 7395, an act concerning marriage equality, and uh, Ray's Bill 1449, an act concerning the recognition of legal unions from other states and jurisdictions. I listened to the excellent testimony from the Permanent Commission on the Status of Women. Um, certainly, you have received from that previous testimony all the reasons why it's important for us to recognize these two pieces of legislation and support same-sex marriage. As all of you know, I am probably the oldest one in this legislature. And I've lived long enough to know that life goes by very quickly. And in one's lifetime, probably the most important thing is to have someone you love to share your life with. I want to impress that upon you because without that someone to love and care about, life has an emptiness that nothing else fills. And many of you are married and know what love means and know how important it is to have someone to share every day with. So I just want to go on record as supporting these two pieces of legislation. It is the right thing for us to do. And I urge this committee to think about how important it is for so many people that you pass this legislation. I thank you for your time. Thank you, Senator Prague. And uh, uh, I, I don't know if you ha are the longest uh, serving member of the legislature. Uh, but uh, your years of experience here are very much appreciated, and I appreciate your testimony. Um, Thank and you, Senator I McDonald. I suspect Senator Capiello is going to. <laughs> Senator Capiello. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, Edith, I, I was just worried that Andrew was going to say, but you were the oldest, and I was getting nervous about that. I am. <laughs> you know? No, you're not. Yes, <laughs> okay. I am. And, you know, I'm not the longest serving. I mean, and when Doc Gunther left me here all by myself, <laughs> I said to him, you know, Doc. I'm going to, you're leaving me all alone. I'm going to have to carry on for the two of us. <laughs> um, be better leave that one alone, <laughs> Senator Capiello. Is there anything further? Representative Morris. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I agree with you, Senator Frank, that uh, it is important to have someone you love to share your life with, and the life is empty, uh, and nothing else fills that. Question simply is how would failure? to pass this bill prohibit same-sex couples from sharing their life with one another? You know, Representative Morris, why should same-sex couples have their relationship be any less important or less respected than heterosexual couples? After all, you're living in this society you found someone you love to share your life with, why shouldn't you have that same respect as anybody else? So then am I to then infer that more so than the, the initial premise that you gave about being able to share the lives with one another, this is more so for you an issue of respect with that? You know, a relationship that is so important to two people needs that recognition whether it's two people of the same sex or two people of the opposite sex. You're part of this society. 
you shouldn't have to feel any less important. Your marriage shouldn't be any less important. Your relationship shouldn't be any less important. And each of us as human beings is entitled to that kind of a relationship. And I strongly feel that a marriage between two people of the same sex is equally as important as a marriage between two people of the opposite sex. Sharing a life and having love is really an enrichment of our own humanity. Okay. All right. For the, for the benefit of, of you, Senator, I thank you so much for your testimony and everyone who's coming behind you because what I'm trying to really get clarity on here as we go forward um, is my understanding that we have, we have full, this, the legislature provided all of the rights for same-sex couples that a married couple has. Anything that the state can confer upon them, we did that with the existing law. All right. So when, when, when I hear testimony that comes forward, what I'm looking for is here is something where, is, is there something that we failed to do? Is there some benefit some civil benefit, a civil benefit that in any way that we have failed to do, because that maybe we need to, to rectify, all right? Um, other than that, what I'm hearing is, is the respect side that, that relates to a label. Um, and, and if we're going to talk about the label, what will help me, okay, is understand how there's a, some, some better benefit of having the label, whether this label, having this label helps to make you a better couple or not? Well, Representative Morris, I don't think people should, uh, you know, just be tolerated. I think that people deserve that word that's so important to all of us. That's respect. Their relationship should have that respect. I don't think we should single people out and give them a second class status. Okay. Thank you very much, Senator Pratt. Thank You're you very welcome. much. Thank you, thank you uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative Morris. Um, anything further for Senator Craig? Uh, Representative O'Neill. I'll take another stab at uh, the line of questioning I tried on uh, Comptroller Wyman. You mentioned earlier the number of years you've served here and the number of years you've lived on the planet. Do you think so you and brought I'm it up. I'm very worried about the inconvenient <laughs> truth of global warming. Well, and, and that's a, you know, the reason I picked that is that's something that, A, is topical right now. And, and 50 years ago, I don't know that anybody was too concerned about global. In fact, even 30 years ago, from what I read, the big concern was global cooling. The scientists were looking at advancing glaciers or something. But the point is that the actions we take have long-term and sometimes unintended consequences. So I guess my first question is, would you agree with that? I would agree with that. Okay. And the point that I was trying to get at with Comptroller Wyman is that I hear the argument made, well, they passed gay marriage or same-sex marriage in Massachusetts and the ground didn't open up and swallow Massachusetts or the sky didn't fall, something to that effect. Uh, but that was about a year, year and a half ago. And that the consequences of a fairly major change in the way people define marriage, it would seem to me, might take a little longer than a year or two to manifest themselves. Would you agree with that? I think marriage has been defined uh, since the beginning of Adam and Eve. Uh, and it could be Adam and Adam, it could be Eve and Eve. And in my, well, excuse everybody me. has a right to their opinion, and Senator I respect Prague, that. Senator Prague, excuse me one second. Um, folks, it, it will be a long day, and I do ask that you, I understand that the issues and, and the emotions on this run deep, but I do ask you to please refrain from expressing opposition or support for anything somebody is testifying about before us. Please continue, Senator Craig. Representative O'Neill, there are people in this room who will never be convinced that this is the right thing to do. And there are people in this room who firmly believe that this is the right thing to do. 
And I'm one of those people who believes that this is the right thing to do. Okay. Because the, the thing that, one of the things that concerns me is that we are doing this, it seems to me, kind of in a hurry. I didn't hear you. In a hurry. That we had civil unions last year or the year before, and, and now we're moving in this direction this year. And Massachusetts did what it did a year or two ago. And that the assumption is being made that, the, that there will not be or probably won't be, or if there are consequences, they're not to be worried about. And when I look at other things that we as a political organization, as either the federal government or the state governments have done, we've done things and we encourage suburbanization. In the 1940s and 50s, people thought that was a good thing. Everybody was going to have a house in the suburbs and they'd have a little patch of grass and that seemed to be the, the ideal that people had. And yet now we look back and say, well, gee, building all those expressways with all those exits, making it easy for people to leave the cities and live in the suburbs, that created sprawl and traffic congestion and air pollution and all kinds of other problems. And so that every time we do something, we may embark upon, and I see, I see this as a major change. And that's the concern that I have about this, is that uh, we're just assuming we're going to make those people, because it seems to, listening to what you're saying, you want these people to feel better, to be respected, to have that sense of good feeling that they get from being able to say that they have a marriage instead of a civil union. And yet, I wonder about what the consequences to the broader society over the longer period of time are going to be. And I don't know that we've thought that through. Well, Representative O'Neill, you know, I think sprawl in buildings is a completely separate kind of issue than granting human beings the right to marry the person that they love and want to share their life with. Um, I can't see where either of where that equates, one equates with the other. Um, but that's how I feel. I can't change my mind. I feel that every marriage needs to be on the same level. You know, I remember not too long ago when I first moved to the town that I live in. And there was a man down the street who was very anti-Semitic. And he didn't care what kind of a person I was. All he knew was that I was Jewish. And he didn't want me there. And as the years went on, and I became part of the community, he changed his mind. So sometimes people develop opinions without really having a good reason. And I think that this opposition to allowing two people who love each other to marry is similar to what I went through when I, you know, this man had no reason, I hadn't done anything just didn't want me there because I was Jewish. It's just like two people who marry each other, whether they're two men or two women, and not doing anything wrong, and to not accept them and respect them is just not the right thing to do. Is there anything further from members of the committee? I think Senator Gomes was next. Good morning, Senator Dupree. Good morning, Senator Gomes. Um, years ago, a black man was considered to be three-fifths of a man, according to That's law. Right. And that law was changed. And in 1965, they changed the law on interracial marriage that allowed interracial marriage. Those two laws were changed, and they talked about whether these laws would have an effect and, and what people thought about them at that time. At that time, there were some people that said we were moving too fast and some people said we shouldn't move at all. 
Would you equate those two laws with the same change in the law that we are m attempting to do today? Absolutely, Senator. Thank you. Senator Capiello. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you again, Edith. Uh, I'd like to ask you the, the question that I asked uh, before of the PCSW, and may maybe I can better understand. Um, you and I both supported the civil union uh, bill law that was uh, proposed and passed two years ago. Uh, and I thought when I was voting for that, that I was voting for uh, equality um, uh, of same-sex couples and uh, giving all the rights that married couples have within Connecticut. And, and putting aside the issue of, of what it's called, and, and that's a significant issue, and, and people on both sides I think will acknowledge that's a significant issue. Uh, even though they have different perspectives on it. But can you tell me what rights right now, tangible, actual rights, are not afforded to same-sex couples that are, that are involved, uh, that engage in a civil union, uh, that, that, that married couples have and that they don't? You know, Senator Camp uh, Campiello, I can't tell you that, and I heard the, um, and I can't think of her name, the new woman who replaced, um, who's now the head of the uh, Permanent Commission on the Status of Women. I heard her say that she would get back to you with that information, um, and I'm sure she will. <coughs> For me, it's a, uh, a moral issue. It's a, it's a human issue. It's an issue of respect for other human beings. Um, the legal issues, I'm sure, is a factor, uh, and you need to know that. But I don't have that information to give you, and I would ask you to think beyond just the legal issues and look at your lovely wife and think how lucky you are to have somebody in your life that you love and you share your marriage with and your whole life with and how nice that is. And I do, believe me. And if I don't, I'll be in big trouble with you. I know that. <laughs> uh, but a few things I think we can agree upon, regardless of how this bill um, ends up, that using your examples from before, unfortunately, there are some things that we can't control, and that's how others will feel regardless of what the state law is, how that gentleman felt in your town, uh, even though there were no laws discriminating against you uh, at that time, but, but he felt the way he did, and we can't change how people feel. Um, and, and we also think and acknowledge that, at least in Connecticut, um, one, we've taken a, a massive step without any courts telling us what to do. We've done it on our own by, by passing civil unions, and that even assuming that this bill doesn't pass, that there is still nothing preventing same-sex couples from enjoying each other's lives and engaging in that love, putting aside the issue of changing the name. But we, we're not going to stop that from happening, and we shouldn't, obviously. So I'm just trying to get a better understanding and will, hopefully, uh, by not trying to fully separate, but separating the issue of what it's called and also what the practical realities are and the differences are for Connecticut residents. Because I think they're, they're two very important issues. Uh, like I said before, they're, they're separate uh, in, in some ways. Uh, and, and so I'm just trying to get a better understanding of that. And I do appreciate your, your, your answers. And I, and I think we do uh, agree on many of what, much of, if not all of what you said earlier. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anything further for Senator Prague? If not, thank you very much, Senator.